ladies and gentlemen, the president of Bugatti Automobiles, Mr. Stefan Winkelmann. Bonjour, bonjour, mesdames, messieurs, et bienvenue chez Bugatti. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bugatti, welcome to the Quail. When I joined Bugatti January 2018, so last year, together with the team, we decided to have two new products coming up each and every year. So last year, we had at the Geneva Motor Show, we had the presentation of the Bugatti Chiron Sport. And then here in, uh, at the Quail, we had the world premiere of the Bugatti Divo. And this year, again, it, at the Geneva Motor Show, we had a real one of one. La voiture noire. And uh, for us, this is the pinnacle of the automotive industry. We call it automotive haute couture. So what's next? What's coming after the Bugatti Divo and La voiture noire? But well, I tackled the team and they accepted the challenge and the result, in my opinion, is wonderful. And uh, now have a look at the car. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bugatti 110. But let me introduce my colleagues. Here we have Mr. Rommelfanger, who is the project manager of all the Bugatti few and one-offs. And then we have Achim Anscheid, our design director. Everybody knows. Thank you, gentlemen. So let me give you a little introduction of why the name and why this car. So if we divide our long history in three periods, the first era is the golden era of Ettore Bugatti in the 20s and 30s. The third, so the last era where we are in today, started in 98 when the Volkswagen Group bought the Bugatti brand. And if we speak about the Intermezzo in Italy, so the second era, then we speak about Campo Galliano and we speak about the car which was launched at the time, which was the EB110 and which was a car which was ahead of its time. There are some around here on the lawn, lucky the owners. And uh, I have to say that Cento Dieci is Italian and stands for 110. So the inspiration is coming from the EB 110, but also Cento Dieci stands for us because this year we are celebrating our 110th anniversary. So it's very important to have this name on one of our cars. But let's have a closer look at the car. The car has an eight liter capacity engine with 16 cylinders, and it has 1,600 horsepower, which is leading to an incredible weight to power ratio of just 1.1 kilos. And this is something which is exceptional. And then we worked a lot on the aerodynamic and on the downforce of the car. You can see that in comparison, for example, at the Xiong, that here the horseshoe is smaller, so we have more airflow, easier airflow on the, on the front. We have uh, a nice air curtain on the sides of the car. We have a massive uh, rear diffuser and we have a, a, a spoiler which is increasing the downforce by 200 pounds. So if we put together the exceptional engine, the weight to power ratio, the aerodynamics and the downforce, we have a car which is Jump starting from 0 to 60 in just 2.4 seconds, we have a top speed of 236 miles per hour. But every car which is leaving our atelier in Moldsheim has to have the clear brand identity of Bugatti. And certainly the Cento Dieci has it. They have to fulfill the issue of being very performing, but also very easy to drive. They have to be very luxurious, but also very comfortable. They have to be elegant and they have to have a design which is going to be timeless. And if we speak about the design here, you see elements. And if you compare them with the EB 110s on the lawn, you will see it. We have those elements here, but we also have the clear reference of all the Bugattis with the horseshoe in the front, with the center line, with the Bugatti lines on the side. 
And uh, Madame Monsieur, I have to say that we are only going to build 10 of these uh, beautiful cars. Uh, the, the price is 8 million euro net, and the cars are all sold. And uh, yes, they're all sold. Ladies and gentlemen, for me, it's clear that we have to continue to work very hard on the future of our brand and our company. Always keeping in mind, if comparable, it is no longer Bugatti. Madame, Monsieur, merci et vive la marque. Thank you very much. Thank you. The world premiere we are showing here today is the Bugatti 110. That's the inspiration to the Italian era of our history in Campo Gagliano, where there was the EB 110. 110 is Italian and means 110. So this is the first reference. The second one is that this year we are celebrating our 110th anniversary. So also 110 fits to this. These are the two things we put together. This car is going to be built 10 times, 8 million euro net, and they're already all sold. You know, the 110th anniversary is today. It's a good opportunity, a good moment to also to look back in history. We did it with La Vature Noire, with the golden era of Ettore Bugatti in the 20s and 30s, with the Atlantique, which was the car we, went, we had the reference for. And now we're doing the same with this intermezzo of Campo Gagliano, so the 10 years in Italy. And it's clear that we are a French company, but it's also clear that part of our, your history was done by, by Italians in Italy, and you have to refer to it. But we are a French company with our headquarters in Molsheim in France. We never speak about the future for sure, but uh, it's clear that you cannot continue like this forever. So you have to have a clear idea. And I think the, the 110th anniversary was a good moment to bring two cars which are reflecting your history. And you can talk about the history by presenting two cars, La Voiture Noire and 110. Let's see what is coming next year. So you see, for me as a chief designer Bugatti, my main job when we do an homage project is not to get stuck in a retro direction, but making translations that find a win-win situation with technical development that is challenging on a package of a Chiron, translating it and still creating a reminiscence that looks modern in terms of the car that we're quoting. I think the inspiration leads back to three items, I would say. One is obviously the car, the EB110 SS at the time. The other one is Romano Artioli, who has really revived the brand Bugatti since the 1960s to come back in 1988. And thirdly, and as a designer I have to say, I very much admire the work of the designer of the car, EB110. If we start at the rear of the car, you see a very direct translation in a modern interpretation. If you look at the rear end of uh, EB110, it's a very graphical look, no? These pill shapes, very geometric. We translated that onto this car, but not literally. We inverted that whole theme, and the whole area in the back there is like a breathing chimney for the engine compartment. When you look towards the front of the car, yes, you see a reminiscence to the EB110, by a smaller horseshoe. Not as small as it is on the original car and quite a bit more three-dimensional, but not as big as on the Chiron either. And you see that the Macaron logo is sitting outside of the horseshoe, more on, more on top. You see a much more slanted nose, uh, which benefits for aerodynamic development in the end. And you also see an evolution uh, from the EB110 headlights that were state-of-the-art at the time, but now we have much more modern technology with uh, less space for the headlights uh, that creates a much more modern look and a modern translation as an homage project starting from the EB110 facial graphic.